Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment. Behind me here, I've got a 2020 John Deere X380 riding tractor. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you all about this tractor, showing you all the features and functions, plus a few key maintenance points. So let's get started. So starting out guys, let's talk a little bit about model number. Here we've got this X380. First letter here being X is going to signify that this is a tractor style mower. Now this is different from the E's and the S's. The X is going to be a dealer exclusive model. So you're not going to be able to get this mower or any in the X series at those big name box stores such as Lowe's, Home Depot, stores like that. Next moving down we have the three. This is going to indicate the series of tractor. So it's an X3. We also have X5s and X7s, so this is gonna indicate the class. Now, the last two digits, or the, the second digit here, rather, is gonna indicate the features and functions of this particular tractor, and then the last digit here is gonna indicate the type of steer. Zero being two-wheel steer, which is gonna be only here at the front, and it could have a four also for four-wheel steer, meaning we steer here at the front and the rear tires, giving almost that zero turn style steering. So from here guys let's check out underneath the hood. First thing I like to point out when getting underneath the hood of these machines is just how easy it is to raise that hood. Also guys while we're raising the hood here I want to point out some important information which is going to be your service interval panel. This is going to be a point for you to reference all the different service intervals for this mower and then also if you forget this is here you can look in that operator's manual. So let's talk about the engine a little bit. First thing you're going to see here is it is a 22 horsepower and this is a Kawasaki engine. I know it's branded John Deere right here on top. If you look over here on the side, you can see the stickers indicating that this is a Kawasaki engine. Now, this is going to be kind of that middle of the road Kawasaki, not your entry level residential, not your commercial, but right in between, which matches up with exactly what the X380 is meant to be, kind of that in between tractor there. So, let's talk a little bit about the service points here. First and foremost, let's talk about the engine oil. Here is going to be your fill right there on the left side of the engine. That yellow cap is going to indicate it, and it also doubles as your dipstick here. Moving on down below the fill neck here, we do have that oil filter. And then down below it, we have the oil drain. Now, nice thing about that oil drain is it is, it is designed to be removed by hand. If it does get too tight or for some reason it's seized up, you do have that square hole there where you can fit in that quarter inch ratchet or some type of tool there to break that loose. Next thing, moving up here to the front, this is a V-twin engine. So you are gonna have two spark plugs, one on this side and one over here on the corresponding side. So it's very important that you can get to those easily. Next thing is gonna be our air filter housing right here on top. Very easy also to get into. We've got two hand turn clips there. Open that up, we can get right to the filter. We also have a hand turn nut here on this hose clamp, making it easy to take that off when replacing that filter. Going back on, just gonna line those up, lock them back down. Make sure to turn them the right way, it makes it a lot easier. Next thing, guys, moving back here behind the engine is we do have that fuel filter. We've got two red clips here. Just gonna have to take an easy, simple pair of pliers there, take those loose get that old fuel filter out of there, install that new one, super easy back behind there. Also right here, as you notice, got plenty of room here for our battery. It is held in by that strap there. That can be easily removed just by taking it out of the notches here and change that battery out. Once again, guys, very open and easy to get to. Now, if you're looking into this mower, maybe you have this mower, um, you're wanting to get all these service parts, um, I've got the place for you to get them. Just look in the description below. There's a parts link. And then also, I've done a video of installing all of these maintenance pieces here that come in what's called a John Deere home maintenance kit. That's gonna have your oil, your oil filter, fuel filter, air filter, and spark plugs all in one convenient kit. And like I said, I've made a video already installing that, so you can check that out also in the description below. From here guys, let's get into the operator station. So before I hop on guys, I wanna talk a little bit about this seat. As you notice, we've got the really wide open back seat. As you can see here, you know, got plenty of cushion. This is gonna be an upgraded seat from what you'd get from, from like the E-Series mowers. Um, it's one of those features as we're moving up into that X-Series, getting into that more dealer exclusive model. You're getting that nicer seat there. Open back for breathability. Also, it's gonna drain off that water if you happen to leave that mower outside. And one thing that doesn't get talked about much on this seat is gonna be the spring system. But what I like to point out is, you do have the dual spring system here, but these are also adjustable. So you can move these into three different positions here. All the way forward is gonna lead for that softer ride. So as you can see here, it makes it a whole lot easier for me to push back on the back. 
and if we move them all the way back here that's going to stiffen up that ride you know making it a little stiffer ride for you know say like a bigger guy like me you're going to want these all the way in the back here you know if you don't have as much weight you might scoot those to the front um, i prefer as much cushion as i can get so that's where they'd be for me so from here guys i'm going to go ahead and hop on show you a few of these features one thing that's nice that i like about this is when we're talking about the seat too is that this is an adjustable seat so as you can see here we do have this lever i've got it in the all the way back position but you have seven inches and in seven different positions of slide here that's going to make it very easily um, adjustable for any size of operator there so um, that's just another nice feature to that seat so guys in the operator station here i'm gonna start over here on my left this is going to be our deck raise and lower lever here now as you can see when i'm pushing on it's raising that deck up and down but we are in transport mode now to where i go to adjust that height it's going to be right down here on my floorboard so right now we're set at about two and a quarter if i want to change that say i want to go over here to three inches i'm just going to turn that dial then i'm going to raise my mower up i'm going to release my mower lifting lever right here i'll go ahead and push that in once i push that in and i let off we're going to go down to that three inch mark so if I want to change that height of cut, I can push all the way in. Now we're going to go down, say, to inch and a half. Now once I let off, we've gone all the way down to that inch and a half cutting height there. So to raise it back up, put it in transport mode, I'm just going to push all the way in with my foot, raise up this lever, and that's going to lock it back into that transport mode. Now, moving up here, guys, onto the controls, we do have our throttle here. We also have our choke. Now, one thing that's nice about this choke is it is spring-assisted. As you saw there, whenever you choke this mower, um, you're not going to be able to leave it in choke. That's just a nice feature, operator feature there. So once you choke that mower and let go, it is going to come down out of it. Moving down, guys, from here, we have this yellow button. And as you can see, it's not indicated by anything. Um, everything else is pretty well labeled except this button here. This is going to be our rear implement option button. Now, what this button does does is with these tractor saw mowers they're meant to only cut going forward but we all know we have those times when we need to cut in reverse so when you need to do that you're going to push this button in start your reverse descent and then let off and then you can cut in reverse now every time you let off of that reverse pedal you're going to have to push this again to re-engage the rear implement option but just know that that's what that is you also have an instructions right down here in between your legs um, for that operation as well as many different operational instructions this is a very informative panel right down here that you could easily reference so from here guys moving across right here one thing that we point out is we do have that 14 inch steering wheel this is pretty well standard on most of these riding tractors um, john deere likes to put that extra big steering wheel on it making it easy for these models that are not power steering models which this is one that is not power steering so therefore we have that larger steering wheel next thing we're going to look at right here is going to be our lcd display as you notice when i turn the switch comes on it's very bright lots of information there on the screen we do have that fuel gauge which looks like we need a little bit of fuel right here um, does indicate that we have our parking brake on gives us our voltage meter and then this over here is going to be our rpm gauge and this is going to indicate when we get up to cutting speed those bars will light up up into that green section so from here over to our right we do have our three position ignition switch three position because you do have the start position you have your lights right there so you do have headlights in the front if you're into cutting you know cutting your grass at night when it's cooler you do have that option for lights and then of course we have our stop position moving down below that is going to be our pto engage this is where we're going to turn on our blades or turn them off very easy one thing to point out is this is an electric pto you don't have that manual lever here to engage it's all done electronically underneath the tractor at that clutch Right next to that is going to be a pop out here. This is where you're going to be able to add, you know, an additional switch, maybe for, you know, an attachment. You know, maybe you have that sprayer at the rear. Uh, maybe you're going to implement mulch control um, down on your deck. So you do have that pop out to where you can add those certain things. And then down below that, we're going to have a couple other things. It's going to be our parking brake lever here. That is going to go with this top pedal. You're going to push that in, push that lever in, and then that's going to release that parking brake to re-engage it right there. And now we're set in park. And then right here, I know this is a familiar symbol for most of you guys, and yes, that is cruise control. Uh, a lot of people still laugh when they come in looking at these mowers, seeing that it has cruise control. But when you think about it, when you're needing to be on these pedals the whole time that you're mowing, and say you have acres and acres to cut, you know, it'd be nice to have that cruise control so you can set that when you're making those big circles. 
Moving down here to my right, guys, we've got three pedals. The top one we talked a little bit about is going to be our brake pedal. Uh, this does function as a regular brake, and then also is how you're going to set your parking brake. And then down below, these are going to be your twin touch pedals. These are the hydrostatic controls for that mower. This is what's going to put you in forward and reverse. So if you notice, right here I do not have a lever or gears. Everything's going to be hydrostatic, which means I'm going to choose my speed here at the throttle. And then the harder I push these pedals in, is going to be the faster I go. So from here, guys, real quick, um, I'm going to start this mower up, let you hear how it sounds. So right there, guys, we're at about half idle. I go ahead and rev this all the way up. Like I said, that's that mid-duty Kawasaki engine there. I'll go ahead and release my parking brake. I've got my blades all the way up, but I'll go ahead and turn those on. We'll dial this back, turn these blades on. And then right here is going to be at full speed. Now, we talked a little bit about these pedals. So like I said, all we're going to have to do to mow is go forward. And then if I wanted to mow in reverse, I would have to push this button. Make sure to push it in, start my rear descent, and now I'm mowing in reverse. Now, from here, guys, my blades are still on. If I try to go in reverse without pushing this, as you can hear there, it kills the blades. So just keep in mind to engage, the, to re-engage those blades, you're gonna have to turn them off, and then you'll be able to turn them back on. So guys, from here, let's move, move to the rear of the machine, show you a few things back there. So at the rear here, guys, let's talk about just a couple of things. First and foremost is gonna be this fuel uh, opening here. This is gonna be a gas fueled mower. So we have this big, wide three inch opening with the tethered lid. So that's a great feature where you're not gonna lose that lid when you go to fuel up this mower. It's also down low and wide open, you know, to where it makes it easier to, to fill right there at the rear. Now also underneath the seat here, guys, one thing is we have our deck leveling kit. It's gonna be the tool and the plug here. And I've got a video down in the description below showing exactly how to use that. So make sure and check that out if you wanna see more there. Moving down here, guys, a couple of things. We do have this rear hitch here. This is gonna be great for those yard wagons, those fertilizer spreaders, rear sprayers, uh, you know, all those attachments you can add here at the back, you are able to pull with this mower. And then lastly, what we have here is gonna be our transmission disengage switch. So right here, it tells us if this lever is pushed in, then we're in ride mode. If it's pulled out, what that's doing is, is that's disengaging that transmission to where we can push this mower. Now I know, I know what you're thinking, why would I ever want to push my mower? But as we know, guys, these are machines. You may have those issues where it does break down or it does stop moving for you. And so therefore, this gives you an avenue to where it makes it easy to push this mower. As long as you have this lever pulled out and your parking brake off, it's very easy to push and move this mower where you need to. So just make sure that if you do that, that before you start the mower again, you do re-engage that lever. Here from here, guys move around to the side and talk about the deck. A little about the deck, guys. First thing is gonna be, this is an XL Deep 48 inch deck. So the way that the XL Deep is gonna differ from some of the decks like in the E series and the S series is this is an XL Deep instead of the edge deck. So this is actually going to have a little bit more depth. It's about an inch extra depth on this mower over than the edge. This is also gonna be 10 gauge steel rather than 12 gauge steel on those edge decks. So a little heavier deck, which is gonna be one of those things moving up into that X3 series, you're gonna a little, high, little more high quality. Another thing you're gonna get that's gonna be different from the XL Deep on an S240 is gonna be that you're gonna have these easily adjustable anti-scalping wheels. On the S240, you can also get the XL Deep, but these are gonna be adjusted by bolts and nuts rather than on this one just being a pull pin system. Just another you know ease of use feature. This is also gonna make this very nice for whenever you're removing this deck changing out those blades as you can just pull these pins loose release them and allow these wheels to turn to the side so once you release this deck from underneath the mower it makes pulling that deck from out from underneath super simple so while we're talking about that guys and talking about releasing this deck from the mower let's just get right into that first thing you're going to do it looks like a cumbersome task but it's really not first thing you're going to do is go here to the front you've got two pins right there to the front you're going to release those pull pins to where you can loosen up this hanger you're going to take it loose from that hanger and then you're going to have back here at the rear 
You're going to have this pull pin system. A lot like you have here on the casters, you're going to pull these loose on either side and then release the belt from this mower. And that's going to all the way, let that mower loose to where you can pull this out, lift it up, and change out those mower blades. So very easy system, you know, very homeowner friendly for changing those out. Um, I'm actually going to put a video description below here where I've already changed these blades, so definitely check that out. Right here on top, we're talking about the features of this deck. One great feature is going to be the spring-loaded spindle covers here. So very nice, makes it easy for cleaning those out as you want to make sure and keep these as clean as possible. Um, the more times you keep these clean, guys, the more times you blow these out, you're just extending the life of that mower. So right here on top, it tells you use air, not water. So a lot of people want to wash these mowers off, which is great to do every once in a while, but the less water you can put on these mowers, the better. The less water is the less chances for rust, wear and tear. So if you have that leaf blower at home, maybe an air compressor in your shop or garage, just break those things out, blow this thing off. You'll greatly extend the life of that mower. One thing also we have here on top is going to be our grease icon. So it does have that grease gun. It's got an arrow. So if you raise up and look, we have that grease circ right there. You're going to have one of these grease circs on all three spindles. This one, the one in the middle, and on the other side there. The one in the middle is going to be on the front. The one on the other side is going to have another icon here showing you where that grease circ is. Just make sure that you're following your interval chart, either in your operator manual or underneath the hood, keeping these things greased like they're supposed to as the spindles and the deck are the lives of these mowers. It's where you're going to get your quality of cut and do all the work. So you want to take care of that. Another feature right here next to that is going to be your washout port. Now, this is one of those things where people ask, oh, you know, does that thing even work? Is it really worth it? The answer to that question is yes. If it wasn't worth it, John Deere would not waste their time in putting this on here. So the way you're going to use this, you're going to pull your mower onto a concrete surface, flat, even surface with no debris underneath it. You're going to hook that water hose up, turn the water on, set your deck all the way on the ground. You're going to release these caster wheels here, set it all the way on the ground where it is touching the concrete turn those blades on. What that's going to do is that's going to create a suction off the concrete. The water is going to be coming down. That's going to be spinning and churning and really cleaning out the underneath of that deck. If you're on the grass here, you don't have the mower all the way to the ground. You're on an uneven surface. All that water is going to do is hit the ground and run out. So you're going to want to make sure to follow those steps um, when you're doing that on cleaning this out. So from here, guys, let's move over to the right-hand side of the deck. So over here on the right side, guys, very similar to over there on the other side, like we talked about before, just make sure on our spindle health here that we're keeping these cleaned out, you know, we're keeping them greased, we're using that water or that air over water, you know, keeping these blown out and keeping them greased up. It's very important for the life of these mowers. And we talked a little bit about our anti-scalping wheels on the other side, so we're just going to want to make sure that we're getting those in the right position uh, before we start cutting. The way you know you're in the right position is you're going to go on a level surface pick your cut of height that you're going to cut at you're going to adjust these wheels up or down to where each wheel is between a quarter and a half inch off the ground and that there is going to give you the right protection you need when you're mowing to make sure you're increasing that cut quality underneath guys one last thing here talking about blades this is a 48 inch deck we do have three blades blade life is very important blade maintenance we're going to want to make sure we're keeping those blades sharp keeping them changed and also keeping this deck level guys one thing that most um, operators forget to do is check the levelness of their deck you know if we're not having that deck level this is where we leave ridges in our grass you know we may have those unwanted lines so make sure that you're doing that guys like i said in the description below i've got a video showing you exactly how to level this deck and change the blades so if you're curious there make sure and check that out and from here guys um, we'll end it uh, if you guys have any questions if there's anything i missed at all make sure to leave me a comment below i try to get back to every comment so make sure to drop those questions uh, that you that you have below also guys if you're interested in any of the parts that we talked about in this video any of the attachments that we went over you know make sure to check out that parts link below um, where you can get those and uh, if you like this video guys make sure to give me a like hit that subscribe button and like like always thanks for watching see you next time i'm sweating dude oh my goodness let's go on <laughs> let's do it call it a day my back hurts dude carrying you around all day first thing i like to point out when getting underneath the hood is just how easy it is to raise that <laughs> as i struggle oh dude dang dude what is that yeah oh you got it got that mug oh dude kind of feel bad sorry buddy
people like me, you want to put these springs all the way to the back here. That's a good idea. All right. All right, dude. You ready? There it goes. You get hit with it once, you get hit with it four times. Let's go. Oh, man. That's funny. I got funny. a video that tells you all about this seat. I got a video that tells you about this video. 